the HeartStart XL Plus, you can monitor ECG, pulse oximetry, non-invasive blood pressure, and carbon dioxide. When monitoring ECG using the XL Plus, you can use the multifunction D-fib electrode pads or monitoring electrodes attached to a 3 or 5 lead set. You can even use external pedals to do a quick assessment only. The ECG cable is color-coded and keyed to fit the ECG port on the measurement connector module. For proper lead placement in 3 and 5 lead sets, consult the instructions for use. The monitoring leads available depend on what type of ECG cable is connected to the XL Plus. When you turn on the XL Plus in monitor or manual defibrillation mode, or switch into one of these modes from another mode, the device looks for the primary lead, as set in configuration. If that lead is not available or has poor ECG quality, the device will prompt with a message indicating you need to select another lead. Press the Lead Select button to display the desired lead in Wave Sector 1. To change the waveform displayed in Wave Sector 2 or 3, press the Menu Select button, navigate to Displayed Waves, select the desired wave sector, select the desired lead. The XL Plus uses the STAR Basic Arrhythmia algorithm for monitoring arrhythmia. It monitors infant, child, and adult patients' ECGs for heart rate and ventricular arrhythmias and generates alarms. It only uses the ECG lead appearing in Wave Sector 1 for single lead arrhythmia analysis. If the device is not identifying the patient's rhythm correctly, you need to initiate relearning. To do this, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, HR Arrhythmia, Relearn Rhythm, and press Menu Select. The XL Plus will then display a message confirming that manual relearning has begun. Now let's set up SpO2 monitoring, which is also available in AED mode, if configured. Insert the blue connector into this port located on the side of the XL Plus. When choosing a location for the SpO2 sensor, the most important consideration is to pick a site that is warm and has good perfusion. Apply the appropriate sensor to the patient. A pleth wave displays while the oxygen saturation is measured and the value is calculated. Within seconds, an oxygen saturation reading and patient pulse rate appear. As the patient's oxygen saturation changes, the SpO2 value is updated continuously. The XL Plus can also monitor non-invasive blood pressure. The measurement can be done automatically or manually. The first step is to select the appropriate size cuff. A properly sized cuff should span approximately two-thirds of the distance between the elbow and the shoulder and wrap around the limb meeting in the indicated area. Attach the cuff to the tubing and the tubing to the NBP port on the side of the XL Plus. To perform an NBP measurement, press the Start NBP soft key. The cuff inflates and then slowly deflates. If you need to stop the NBP reading, press the Stop NBP soft key. The NBP measurement appears on the screen as systolic followed by diastolic with a mean arterial pressure in parentheses. To schedule automatic NBP readings at regular intervals, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, NBP, NBP Frequency, and press Menu Select. Select the desired interval and press Menu Select again. Automatic measurements begin based on the interval set. The automatic time interval appears here on the screen. The Heart Start XL Plus can also measure carbon dioxide or CO2. There are two sensors used by the XL Plus, mainstream and sidestream. There are some factors to consider when selecting the sensor type and accessories for your method. Patient situation, ventilated or not ventilated. Patient type, 
adult or infant child, ventilation type, humidified or non-humidified, and the need for supplemental oxygen delivery. To monitor end tidal CO2, connect the sensor cable to the CO2 port on the HeartStart XL Plus and the sampling line to the sensor. Attach the sampling line to the patient according to the instructions for that sampling line type. Confirm that the patient category is appropriate for this patient. When a sensor is connected to the CO2 port, the measurement is automatically turned on. When using either the Philips mainstream or sidestream method for end tidal CO2 monitoring, you must reset the CO2 sensor by performing a zeroing procedure. This must be done any time a new sample line is attached, there has been a significant change in environmental conditions, when accuracy of the reading is questionable, or when prompted by the Heart Start XL+. Zeroing the sensor can be done by using the Zero CO2 soft key or accessing the Zero function using the Menu Select button. In this case, we'll demonstrate the procedure using the soft key. Confirm the Heart Start XL Plus is in Monitor, Manual Defib, or Pacer mode. Simply press the Zero CO2 soft key and the CO2 Zero in Progress message appears on the display. There are two measurement values associated with CO2 monitoring. The first, ETCO2, or end tidal carbon dioxide, is the peak CO2 value measured during expiration. The second is AWRR, airway respiration rate, or the number of breaths per minute. In addition to the values, the monitor displays the CO2 waveform or capnogram in the configured wave sector, if available. This is the normal capnogram shape. It is important to note that on a capnogram, positive deflections represent expiration, whereas negative deflections represent inspiration, which is the opposite of most respiratory waveforms. The HeartStart XL Plus generates different alarms indicating changes in patient condition, physiological alarms, or device cable conditions, technical alarms that may require attention. There are three alert levels, high priority, medium priority, and low priority message. A high priority alarm warns of a life-threatening condition, such as asystole or ventricular fibrillation. The alarm message displays with a red background and sounds like this, or this. A medium priority indicates a non-life-threatening condition such as when the heart rate measurement violates the high or low limits. The alarm message displays with a yellow background and sounds like this. Or this. Low priority alarms usually indicate a device problem or error condition, such as this SPO2 non-pulsatile message, and they appear in this cyan background and sound like this. or this. Alarms are also categorized as latching or non-latching. With a latching alarm, visual and audible indicators remain present until they are silenced and acknowledged, regardless of whether the alarm condition still exists. With a non-latching alarm, visual and audible indicators disappear when the condition no longer exists. To respond to an active alarm, Use the Menu Select button to address the audio pause message. Setting high and low alarm limits and turning alarms on or off is the same for all measurements. So let's look at how to do these tasks using NBP and SPO2 as examples. To set the high and low limits, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, NBP, NBP limits, systolic, and press menu select. The high limit appears in this window. Use the up or down navigation buttons to increase or decrease the high limit. Press menu select to set the new high limit. Now the low limit appears. Use the navigation buttons again to adjust the low limit 
and press Menu Select to set the new low limit. The current high and low limits for each measurement appear next to its measurement numeric. If you need to turn off an alarm, start by pressing the Menu Select button. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, SPO2, and Alarms Off, and press Menu Select. The menu closes and this icon appears next to the SPO2 measurement, indicating that the SPO2 alarm is off. The Heart Start XL Plus can store up to 8 hours of vital signs trending data for review, printing, or transmission. To view the stored trending data, the Heart Start XL Plus must be in monitor mode. Press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Trends and press the Menu Select button. The trending report displays here. Most recent data is to the right and older data to the left. As new data is acquired, it displays on screen. The trending report only displays measured parameters. This symbol indicates invalid data, while the same symbol before a numeric indicates questionable data. A blank space indicates data that is unavailable. Periodic measurements, such as NBP, include a timestamp. You can adjust the display's time interval for the current patient. With vital signs trending active on the display, press the Menu Select button. Navigate to Trend Interval and press the Menu Select button. Use the navigation buttons to select the trend interval you want and press the Menu Select button. Use these soft keys to scroll backward and forward in the Vital Signs Trending Report. When there's no more data in a particular direction, the soft key becomes inactive. To exit the trending report, press the Close Trends soft key. With monitoring setup complete, we can now turn our attention to the therapeutic use of the device. The Heart Start XL Plus provides therapy options including semi-automatic and manual defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion, and pacing.